and one. Hello! Oh, this bollocks again, really. Wrong shit as well. After what he just said, man. Hello and welcome to episode 3 of the Forgotten Realms. Today I have playing with me Jamel. Hey guys, Jamel here playing Thorn and Deepstone, our resident mountain dwarf fighter. I have Moon. Hello Moon, I'm here playing Kai Mornrove, our cleric druid. I have Oscar. Hello, I'm Oscar or Salty. I will be playing Bellinor Willowind, the wood elf bard. And I have Josh. I am Josh, and today I will be playing Black Ashton, the half elf ranger, with a mysterious and definitely not dragon egg sized bag on his back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about that. Um, so, uh, when we left off, you had just arrived into a room. This room contained a mind flare. Was stroking a strange brain with feet uh, that had feet, indeed. Um, he uh, cuts a nightmarish figure and is wearing dark black robes. As you enter, you all hear a voice in your mind. Mm. Intruders. Welcome. But I don't think it's time for us to play quite yet. See you soon. And with that, a black door appears on the back of the room um, with a gesture at his arm. And the Mind Flayer and his Intellect Devourer pet rise and float through the wall. The wall returns to being a wall. And immediately, um, the uh, small orc steps up in his uh, purple robes. And he looks down at you and... Excellent. I've been looking for an opportunity to re to restore my reputation. And you look like it. He turns to his left. Ab! He turns to his right. Ob! Deal with these intruders. Two bugbears rise to their feet from their kneeling positions. And I will ask you, please, to roll. Don't roll! Roll. Initiative. Here we go. Sorry. It, it, uh, I misclicked. Also wow. misclicked. Can I roll again? <laughs> yeah, whoopsies. Rolled a little too um, late there. Nope, that sounds about right. Okay, cool. On your right, you see Bugbear Ob. On your left, you see Bugbear Ab. And at the center, you see this purple-robed orc clutching a staff in his right hand. Excuse me. Um, Ab will step forward. Where's my enemy counters? Cool. Ab will stride forward 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 feet. And he shall raise his large club with spikes coming out of either side. And he shall swing down at Thornham. Oh, Jesus. Uh, let me make sure I'm rolling to everybody because uh, let's not start off the fight like that without you guys being able to see it. 
Um, Sounds okay. good. Thought on that's a 10 to hit you, as opposed yeah, to no. that 20 I rolled off, uh, <laughs> before I was sharing. Um, Jesus. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ob will proceed forwards. Um, and he will also... Oh, we've got the wrong counter. That is troublesome. Do we? Yeah, we do. Um, oh, Kai yeah, we was, do. Kai was invisible. Um, <laughs> and uh, the next one... Will roll in that 20. Did it? it yeah, did. it did. Um, Ow. I'm sorry if this is the end of your character. Um, that is 28 damage, Thornum. Yeah, I'm down. In one hit. Holy shit. My bad. Um, okay. Uh, Blake, you're up. Oh, we wreck on right? that? No. <laughs> can I, can I uh, 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 remember to have cast Silvery Barbs on that at 20? Nope. Yeah, that would have been good. Too late now. Would have been nice if you had saved your friend. That would have been it? really nice. Um, so I'm going to um, run. I'm going to exit stage right. <laughs> to as far away as I can. Um, and then I, I don't that. really have a... I don't have a lot of resources, so I don't want to waste them. Uh, full disclosure, this is your boss fight and the end oh, this of the is dungeon. The boss fight? This is, that's okay. why there's a B yeah, yeah, on the yeah, screen yeah. for boss. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, then I will... Um... Didn't you get that from the first enemy stepping up and cunting your uh, tank to the edge of nowhere? Um... I don't want to address <laughs> all of the untapped rage you have against Jamal. <laughs> Please take um, but I will, yeah, I will favor foe and hunter's mark boss man, and um, boss man B, um, and I will attack with my uh, longbow. Okay. Okay, that is a uh, twenty-one to hit. That'll hit. Okay, that is eleven plus fifteen. Plus <laughs> eleven plus four, correct, right? Uh, you're doing it, it's fifteen, sixteen overall damage. Yeah? Sixteen overall damage. Yes. Yeah. Okay, he looks wounded. Does that concludes your turn. Uh, yes. Belenor, you're up. I will turn towards the boss in the back, the orc in purple, and I'll look at him and I'll tell him the funniest joke he's ever heard. He needs to make a wisdom save. The phone. What is the joke? I can't say it on stream. We will determine if it's the funniest. I, I don't want to get him banned. Uh, regardless, he will roll a nat 20, so it wasn't very funny. Clearly, not the funniest joke I've ever told no. as I uh, turn to Blake and I say, An excellent shot. Maybe you can survive, unlike our friend over here. Consider yourself inspired. And to end my turn, I will run over towards Blake in the corner. Okay. 35 uh, feet, though. Blake will get out a stick and just poke at him and say, leave me alone. The purple-robed orc will look at you. I'll tell you a funny joke. Your pathetic attempts at magic. And with that, he'll raise his hand and he will roll to hit you. Um, that's a 16 to hit you, Velenor. Yeah, that'll hit. Yeah, I'm taking this one, hopefully. Um, it doesn't kill me. And uh, you will take two fire damage. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, I took that one. Yeah, and uh, then he will look to ah uh, Blake. Um, Blake, that's a nineteen to hit you. Misses. Fucking doesn't. Um, you take four fire damage. Wait, wait, wait. No, you don't have shield as a ranger. No. I would like to, as a reaction, uh -huh. use blur. Uh, it's not a reaction, is it? It can be if you'd like it to be. <laughs> I don't want it to be. Uh, Kai, you're up. Yeah, how much damage was that? Wait. Four fire. Um. I'm still trying to understand this fucking spell. Uh, what's the spell? It's what a was fucking long? spell, apparently. I'll I'll it's a human spell, I promise. Uh, you can't cast Close Wound on somebody that's unconscious, by the way. 
it gives them a minimum of one HP. Yes, it says if the target has at least one hit point. Fine, whatever. I'm gonna run up to him and cast Cure Wounds on him. Okay, you're next to him, so you can just put your hand out. Okay. Cure Wounds? Uh, cure Wounds, yep. Yeah. Uh, give us some heals. 11 HP, and then I'm gonna run away. Cool. Um, going back left, are we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you don't have any bonus actions yet, do you? Um, I do, but can't cast the second spells. spell. Yeah, yeah, no, the spells. Okay, cool. Uh, fantastic. Um, and as you bring him up, Thornum, you're up. Hey. I'll look at um, E2, club me. Ah, that fucking hurt. Big ugly bastard. And, uh... Did you want to use a bonus action first? I will use a bonus action soon. Okay, cool. But, first off, I shall attempt to chop his leg out from under him with my great axe. Yep. E2, the one that hit me hard. Mm -hmm. That's a 25 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, yeah, that's uh, 14 damage. Oh, he is severely wounded. And Excellent I'm action hit. surging, and I'm going to chop his leg again with the axe. Okay. That's a 24 to hit. That'll hit. And that's uh, 16. That will kill him. As you rend that's him first one leg, he drops oh, down to the ground, and you swing with the backhand, rending his head from his body. Excellent work. Any bonus action? Payback's a bitch. So am I. That's my turn. Uh, no bonus action, Thornum? Uh, that was my bonus action to um, action take search. That's a bonus action. That's a free action. Oh, it's oh, it is a free action. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I thought that was a bonus action for a second. Mm -hmm. Um, no, no, I can't second. Uh, you've wind. used your second wind already. Rest. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, in that case, that's fine. Um, uh, actually, do I have a potions chug? No, no, I don't. Oh, let's hope uh, that you not that Don't thing. have a uh, good berry. It's non so. You have a good berry. Time. I gave everyone. Yeah, good he berries. did give good berries. If you want to add four HP. Oh, sure. Everyone has four good berries. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's everyone has effect, four? Right? Thank you. What? No, not four. Uh, yeah, everyone has two. I wrote the number down. Yeah, everyone has two. Right. And uh, you and Fornum had three, I believe. Um, so, yeah, four HP you can gain. Uh, that's an 18 to hit you, Thornum. Uh, That will hit me, yeah. Okay. It's not a crit damage this time, so it's only 11 damage. Okay, that's I believe that good berry just like kept five, you alive. I'm alive. Yeah. Um, Blake, you're up. Thank you for the good berry. That kept me alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. I will take out another arrow and fire at Big Boss Man B. Mm -hmm. Big Boss Man B. Yeah. That's my stage name. <laughs> that is a 23 to hit. Oh, that'll hit. He was going to shield, but he can't shield that. That's 12 plus. Um, Are you sure you want to change character here? Yeah? Just, just confirming this. One, so that's 13 plus. Boy. In it, Jesus. Yeah, plus you sure one. you want to change? So that's 14. Please describe his yeah. grisly demise. Okay, so what happened um, <laughs> was. Um, uh, Blake puts down his sack on the ground in front of him, <laughs> takes out... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I had another y'all. <laughs> takes out an arrow, lines it up, and then fires his party. No. Um, <laughs> and then lines it up with Big Boss Man B, and as he uh, lets go, it um, fire straight through his eye, through his skull, taking his eyeball with him. Um, and then his body just like collapses to the floor. Like after a few seconds of being like, uh, 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 he like falls back. Very good. I think uh, uh, James has heard that noise before. Bellano, you're up. Oh, my turn. Gosh. Um, it was better than your vicious mockery, to be fair. Um, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. Uh, okay, um, it's the last one I, anyway. I'm going to whisper, uh, as previously before done, a sweet, sweet, sweet melody of one and three only. But this time, 
it's going to be the entirety of We Will Rock You. Okay. No. Doom. 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 <laughs> um, that is a 11 on the wisdom save. All right, let's roll them d6s, baby. Let's roll them d6s. 12 damage in total. Okay, 12 psychic damage, and as he walks away, um, that will provoke an opportunity attack from Fordham. I shall try to... Uh, roll to hit. Cleave him twain with my axe. That's a nat 20. That'll do it. Uh, yeah, that's uh, 17 damage. As he turns his back to walk away, his ears ringing with the sounds of this discordant melody as he's trying to fill in the gaps of We Will Rock You because it just doesn't sound right. He receives a large great axe in the back of the neck and he will be rent asunder. He is dead. And that will conclude our combat. And, ah, no, that's uh, uh, guys... <laughs> I'm feeling pretty <laughs> fucked up here. Have a good bear, you'll be fine. Uh, that fucking hurt. That hurt so fucking much. Okay, I'm gonna eat all my good berries because fuck it. Two uh, left, yeah? Yeah, you can have two. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, uh, that's, that's still rough. That's still rough. No, yeah, you'll be fine. Shut up, quit whining. <laughs> um, okay. Um, as you... I'm not wasting his power spot on you. Uh, as you look wow. over to uh, the, um, the orc's body... Um, you see, standing over in the corner, um, looking incredibly hurt, a red-headed man. His uh, fingers look crushed. His eyes are green. And uh, you brought Renair with you, right? Yes. Okay. Renair will run over turn. to uh, to Floon. Um, Wait, Renair didn't get his turn. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's salty, shitty fault. Anyway, uh, Renair will run <laughs> over to Floon and... <sighs> wow. Floon! How are you? <sighs> Quick, he's hurt. He's really hurt. Um, he uh, starts digging through his pouch and he pulls out a potion of healing and pours it down the mouth of Flown. It's okay. Come on, let's get you out of here. Sorry. I don't understand why you're laughing. Because <laughs> the chat... Fucking me, I go. There you go with the <laughs> sentence. I've watched a lot of battle bots and never thought, I sure would like to put my junk in that. <laughs> that makes one of us. Then you're, watch you're watching the wrong battle bots. <laughs> Somebody's not <laughs> watching oh, anime on TV. Oh. <laughs> okay. um, oh, fuck. This party's devolved already. <laughs> nevertheless, uh, you bad. notice that there is a satchel of Grimsh uh, over Grimshaw's shoulder. Um, that, uh, Bellinor, you would know to be, um, a sort of wizard's, uh, wizard's pack. Um, and sitting next to the small stone chair is a small wooden chest, um, lying slightly open with some gold and silver in it. Well, let us loot. We got a loot and scoop. Okay, um, in the satchel, you will find a spell book uh, containing the following spells. Um, and uh, if you were able to... Hmm, no, none of you are wizardy. Um, yet. Yet? What? Uh, those, are the the um, those are the spells uh, that are inside the spell book, but unless you're a wizard, that is completely useless to you. Um, there is also a scroll of burning hands at level one. Um, and uh, in the chest next to the um, stone chair are two potions of healing, 16 silver pieces, uh, sorry, 16 gold pieces, 82 silver pieces, and 250 copper pieces. Uh, Jamal, those are copied into the chat for you. Okay. Okay. Um, as you look around the room, uh, the bug bu bugbear's morning stars are too cumbersome and badly made to be of any use to either of you. Um, and, uh, oh, were we in the wrong room? Yeah, yeah, you went to put us here in the um, big room down the bottom. Yes, we did talk about this, didn't we? We went down the corridor. Um, yeah, and there's a few other little rooms sort of uh, visible from here. Um, there is a small sleeping quarters uh, in the center that you can see that is open. 
Um, and uh, the rooms, uh, both of these rooms to the southeast look relatively identical. Um, and then at the uh, top right, you see a, what looks to be a small passage leading out. Well, uh, I think we should get going, probably. Yeah, let's uh, take Flume back to... His boy the guy. Yeah. The guy who okay. gave us the book. Um, Flume will turn to you and... Thank you, I... Do I know you? No, uh, maybe not us, but we, um... We were hired to find you and rescue you and bring you back. Hired? By who? He wrote the guide to monsters, come on. Xanthar. No, the other one. That's his, uh, He wrote Hold the on. guide to everything. Voller wrote the guide to... Um, yeah. Ironically, Xanathar is the owner of the guild whose hideout you're currently in. Um, he's a beholder, though. Um, Valar is the one that sent us. Uh, Volo. Yeah, um, Volo. V-O-L-O. Uh, get it right, my dude. Um, You'll get it eventually. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, he'll look to you and... Ah! Oh, Volo. Wow. It'll be good to see him again. Uh, there's an escape hatch up that way. I'm not quite sure where it heads. Well? Are we headed up it? So, no hanging around, no dilly-dallying, yeah? We're, caught, we're getting out of here getting right away. Of here. Well, yes. I have a present for the group once we get back anyway. Oh. Oh, okay. As the three of you, Bellinor, Kai, and Thornham, escort um, our friends um, our, our friend Floon and Rene out of the room um, Blake, you hear a pulsing sound in your mind stop, stop stop constantly what? telling you to stop Blake, you have heard this before from the drow when you attempted to make your escape with the dragon's egg You begin to see flashes of light in your eyes. Um, as you all head down the passageway, you'll send out of the cellar and enter a small house um, that looks to be that of a halfling's. But, Blake, you enter a state of panic and you realize that it's time to get on the run again. As you turn to your party, what do you say? I say... Oh, wait, I, um... I am going to, um, <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take my companion rock out of my pocket. I'm gonna hold it in front of them, and then I'm gonna throw it on the floor. And just before it lands on the floor and teleports back to my pocket, I'm gonna say, "Suck it, fuckers!" <laughs> and run. Okay. As you burst out the door and begin to make your way out of the room, you all hear a screeching from the pack slung over Blake's shoulder. As the pack rips and out rises a black dragon. It's tiny. Barely able to fly. It grabs onto his the shoulder um, of his cloak and uh, turns back to you and lets out a little screech. And a little drop of acid drops out of its jaw. Just, what the hell is that? You hear a pulsing sound again in all of your heads. Grab him! Stop him! Seize him! But then one voice overrides them. Not yet. I have plans for that one. And we shall say goodbye to Blake. Bye, Blake. He doesn't get to see my present. I'm no, sad. he doesn't. You know what I'm talking about, right, James? Oh, get back on camera, Your though. package? I'm not saying goodbye to Josh. I'm just saying goodbye to Blake. Um, wait, wait, so... For the boss fight, each of you may gain 150 XP. Congratulations. Level up! No. That is not for, my, for my secondary. Oh, that little shit, yeah. Okay. Josh, um, can you come back on camera so I can use other screens, please? Do I just change it to a level two? 
expert. Yep, yep, that's how that works. Um, he... Cool. Um, and uh, Flume will turn to you and... What the hell was that about? And, uh... I... Go on. I... I, I, I honestly don't know. I don't have a clue. I, I'm as lost as you. Hmm. And then you hear a, a man shout out, What do you mean, what the hell was that about? What are you doing in my cellar? And a man comes down. He's a halfling uh, with a small red beard. What are you doing in here? Where did you come from? How did you get in? This is my beer cellar. Yeah, sorry to intrude. Sorry to intrude? You don't want to know what hell we just escaped. <laughs> I don't want to know what hell leads into my basement. Yeah, Do I need to move? Yeah, don't worry, we'll clear out. We'll clear you might want to. Yeah, you might want to like put some concrete down right about where this entrance is. Um, seems to be tunnels underneath your home, and I don't know if that's on purpose or just a structural design flaw. But if you don't want that there, I'd probably seal it off. Indeed, I will. Have it boarded over and locked up, but yeah, good idea. Well, There's not nice. Thank you for making now. me aware and for being so well for not being too frightening coming out of it. If you should need to make use of it again, a couple of copper pieces, I'll have it unlocked for you. Oh, fantastic. Uh, sorry for the bloody mess we dragged in here. Our friend is quite injured, but that's okay. I guess we see a lot of trouble here. It's nice that. You seem to be civil, at least. Um, well, at the very least, I can assist you in cleaning. Um, if you need me to, I can come back and, and help you with that. No, no, it's quite all right. Uh, my name's Daniel. Daniel Peabody. Um, and, uh... I, uh... Well, I brew some good beer down here. Oh, there's no ASMR. Uh, tell you, one of those would not go amiss right now. Mm. I beer. could go for an ale. <sighs> well... Mine's not brewed yet, but you're not far from the, uh, yawning portal. It's just around the corner, the road. Hmm. Aye, aye. How oh, convenient. We have a place there. Oh. Well, perhaps I'll see you around then. I sell ale to them occasionally. Hmm, very well. Okay. When yours is ready, I'll buy some. <laughs> well, <sighs> you'll be drinking it if you're at the yawning portal. Um, Excellent. Well, maybe then we've had your drink. Good, I hope so. Well, anyway, best of luck to you, and you should really get that side scene too, Thornham. Yeah, it's, uh... It stings. It's not How good. long may it rest? It heals every wound, <laughs> apparently. Hmm. Well, as you yeah. walk down the, um, down the streets, you head over to the Yawning Portal. And, uh, Floon is very excited, and as he enters first, you see Volo stand up from a table while he was drinking alone, anxiously awaiting news of Floon's fate. He springs up and runs and hugs Floon. Then he looks over his shoulder and he picks up Kai with one hand and hugs her as he puts his hand on Thornham's shoulder and then Bellinor's and gives, attempts to give Bellinor a little kiss on the cheek. And then he gives Thornham a little rub on the top of the head. He puts Kai down. And, but there were four of you, no? The, uh, I oh, were. Uh... The other one, he seemed to have some existential crisis. He he started talking to himself, then ran. And uh, then he called us fuckers. Threw a stone at us. So. Oh. Not That's quite sure. Disappointing. Um, is one of you Thornham? Aye, that's me. Oh, there's someone who said they were looking for you earlier. But before that, I must confess, I have not managed to raise the money promised in time. However, never let it be said that Volo Renege is on a promise. Allow me to present something far more valuable. And with that, he pulls out a scroll tube and he says, this here is the deed to a remarkable property here in Waterdeep. We'll need a magistrate to transfer the ownership, but I'll arrange a meeting with one after you've inspected the estate and deemed it satisfactory. This tube contains a deed to Trollskull Manor. It's a historic building in the North Ward. The character's no, never mind, I didn't mean to read that bit. It's a historical building in the North Ward um, that is indeed legitimate, though there are rumours of it possibly being haunted, so you might need to do some house cleaning first and housekeeping. Nevertheless, um, I was thinking it might yield a chapter for my next book, but instead, you know, what better a reward for bringing such a fine friend back to me? 
And with that, he's got his arm round Flun's uh, hip and he pulls him in close. And of course, should you need any favours, I do know the finest places to eat and the best merriment in town. At some point, I'll have to give you a tour of Waterdeep, if you'll let me. I would love that. Flun turns to you all and... <laughs> I have little to offer, but... Should you need to know where the best games of cards are, or perhaps have somebody help you out on a deal. Let it never be said that Flume will lose a game of cards. And he gives you a nod and, and thank you. And you rescued me from hell. As you look over to the bar, Thornham, Volo gestures and says, uh, I think that's the friend you were looking for, or who was looking for you. Maybe you want to have a word with him. Uh, you will each gain 300 XP for completing the um, for completing the uh, first mission Damn. and a feat for com for beating your first boss. You may do that oh, in the break, shit, however, yeah. as there is nothing but roleplay for the next half an hour or so. As Thornham, you look to the bar. Please describe your character, Josh. Okay, so uh, I'm playing a rock gnome called Theodore Edison. Um, he looks exactly as portrayed. <laughs> He's got a uh, moppy, uh, uh, dark, uh, blue hair, um, kind of dirty overalls with lots of like screwdrivers and um, other things to make things with. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, uh, and like dirty boots, and he's sat at the bar, probably on a stool. Um, and then next to him is floating this uh, bronze uh, metal, I guess, ball, you could say, um, that has one giant singular eye and uh, a big mouth with jagged, sharp metal teeth. And, um, Attached to the circular body is metal, um, no other word to describe them, tentacles. <laughs> um, and uh, at the bottom of this circular body is, looks to be a jet that's keeping it hovered off the ground. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's Theodore. Um... Thornham, as you see uh, Theodore uh, sitting over to the side, um, he, he sort of walks over to you. And uh, I'll leave the roleplay with you guys. Um, as Thornham, well, Kai, damned. and Bellinor are with you. Right. Well, I'll be damned. Wasn't expecting to see you here, of all people, Theodore. Thornham, what are you doing in this neck of the woods? Uh, making my living, you know, doing my bit. It's more exciting than the axes, I tell you. So, uh, yeah, this is what I do now. Who's this fellow, Thornum? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how best to tell you about him, but this right here is Theodore. I used to do some, um, Work alongside him back in Mirabar before we left, or oh, before I left. I'm guessing you've left as well now. Well, Sarah here didn't want to go stay at home to go on Sarah. a honeymoon. Yes, Sarah. this is your name is now. Yes, this is Sarah. Um, we're currently on our honeymoon. We thought we'd come out and grab a drink. Oh my word! Um, just like seeing at the yeah. moment, isn't that right, baby? And he'll turn to her, but she's just. <laughs> <laughs> like no response. Ah, uh, uh, you know, genuinely want yeah, to honeymoon. just look around, trying to figure out who the fuck he's talking to, because it's clearly not the mechanical thing right next to him. <laughs> I'm gonna attempt Leo. to move the mechanical thing away just to see if there's a person behind it. As you uh, begin to move her, uh, he'll like grab her. Where are you taking my newly bedded wife? Oh! Excuse okay. me. I'm so sorry. Theo, 
Gosh. Have you gone off even further off the deep end? What are you talking about? And then he'll pick up a napkin that was on the bar and wipe Sarah's face. Be like, oh, you've got a bit of food on yourself, darling. And wipe her. How did he even no. get the food on its face? <sighs> Look, Theo, I'm not one to shame, but what are you doing, lad? I'm happily married. What are you doing? <sighs> Apparently you're doing better than me because I'm nearly dying. <laughs> Everybody has their own pace, I guess. I, as Thorn says that shit, I'm just gonna slap another good berry in his fucking face. Stop <laughs> whining. You're fine. I knew I, I got my ass kicked today, man. Yeah, I but think you're I'm gonna ass. need You'll be okay. more alcohol to be able to deal with this today. <sighs> I was never gonna let you die, sweetie. Relax. Sorry, I don't, I don't actually know your names. Could you tell me, please? Ah, where are my manners? My name is Kai. Kai Morngrove. It's a pleasure to meet you. And your wife. Thank you. It's very nice to meet you too, Kai. And uh, you? Yeah, I'll turn towards him and I'll do a, a half bow and I'll introduce myself. Uh, hello, I'm Bellinor Willowind. Uh, the resident... Um, Hmm. I would say flirt, but it seems you've got that handled yourself over there with your wife. Flirt? Uh, Excuse me. This is oh, an open relationship. Thank you very much. I, I well, that's not what I was saying. Such things. I, I wasn't implying that. I was just saying maybe you're more successful than I am, seeing how you found yourself a companion? Well, I aren't one to judge, but call a spade a spade. Fair enough. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to shake Theo's hand. To shake my hand? Yes. I will uh, shake your hand back. And then I will reach out and <laughs> kiss the hand of his, of his mechanic. <laughs> and, I'll, <laughs> and I'll say, and a hello to you, Sarah. I will uh, turn to Sarah. Oh, isn't, isn't it nice to be around civilized people again, Sarah? I told you this would be the perfect place for our honeymoon. And yet again, she's just like, <laughs> no response, stares blankly. Does, does Sarah speak? Sarah is a bit shy, um, especially in a new place, a new environment. She gets a little oh. bit socially anxious. Um, so don't nice. take offense. Um, but she, I can tell she's very happy to see you all and to meet. Well, how about we all... Yeah, go go to a table and get some drinks, and we can discuss this a little bit more. I think I uh, think I definitely need a few drinks right about now. I I agreed on that. First round's on you. Um, at this moment, uh, Volo will sort of come over to you and. Uh, did you want to see your new estate today, or did you want to go in the morning? Uh, uh, take a look morning, at my please. friend here. Tell me that you'd like that you think we should go right now. I think he well, might need a little rest. Perhaps he might just ho find home. A huge gash in my side. Well, in that case, let me at least get you a beer, fella. Please. And uh, he will purchase your first round for you, round of ale. And one, don't, don't forget one for Sarah, of course. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sarah doesn't drink. She oh. becomes a very angry drunk. Don't you, darling? <laughs> so oh. well for her. Oh, okay, okay. I'll just shake my head. Almost in I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll lean over to Theo and I'm going to say, I know she doesn't drink. I just wanted an extra one out of him. Then just ask for one. Also, he can hear us. So, you're kind of weird. Anyways. <laughs> Me? Okay. Me? We're weird? You guys, I just don't understand why he is saying something in front of someone instead of just saying it to the someone. You being the someone, obviously, and him being the person who should have said to the someone. Again, someone um. being you. I'm genuinely confused by everything that comes out of his mouth at this point. <laughs> Seeing the look, on, seeing, seeing the look on Bellinor's face, I'll just uh, turn to him and say, "Yeah, this is Theo. This is Theo." Yeah, I'll just look at you and just go. Well, 
the Tavern Owner. What does this mean? It means I want a drink. <laughs> the Tavern Owner at this point will hand you out all uh, a drink. And, uh, yeah, you can sit down, enjoy it, take a long rest over the course of the night. Oh, I would like to present my artwork to the group. Oh, yeah. As we uh, have gotten a couple drinks in, I will I will turn to our new friend and I'll say, though you weren't there for this moment, it, it really it really captured my, my artistic brain as I'll pull out a painting that I have been working on, um, now finished, of an in-action shot of Thornham punching a man in the face as the rest of us engage in a tavern brawl. <laughs> oh, yes, this guy, this guy. I figure this would be the first thing we hang up in our home. It uh, brings back good memories of Thornham's strong arms, Kai's attempts at pushing, and our lost friends... Yeah, I actually don't care about him. He called me a fucker as he left. <laughs> that's, that's a fair point. As a matter of fact, if you want it, we can shorten the painting down a little bit. I can rip him out. No, no, it's fine. It's it's fine. Ah, fair enough. A memory's a memory. I'll grab, I'll grab, I'll grab my uh, tank and raise it. Aye. To the new beginnings. To new friends. To a great honeymoon. Oh no. That's a that's a good one, Kai. I I would <laughs> would agree with that one. <laughs> My. What am I gonna do with you? Do with me. <sighs> Not nothing, young one. Nothing. Young. I'm like five hundred years old. Oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> is it fucking Wow. I was just like leaning. Um, I'm, 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 I'm kind of in my head assuming that Thorn was like sat across from me. So I was just like lean over the table. You have some kind of weird friends. I think Thornum's the youngest in the party, isn't he? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Not by much, though. How old is everybody? 150. Thornum? Uh, not a day over 29, I swear. Yeah, I'm no, 53, like, so... <laughs> secretly, it's a little bit older than that, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm 53, so I might be the youngest. No, that'd be me. That'd be me. As the evening progresses, uh, you can take a long rest, uh, a few drinks, um, frolic the night away. Uh, all your drinks will be paid for by Floon. And um, by Volo, as they are very grateful for your hard work. And uh, Volo says to you, oh, perhaps early tomorrow we might make our way over to the manor. Unless, of course, you want to explore without me. No, going early with a tour, courtesy of yourself. That sounds good. Uh, Rene turns to you all and I... I'd like to get to the right section. Here we go. Um, I'd like to the take right a section. yeah. I'd like to take a, a day or so. Um, perhaps tell some of my friends uh, what's happened, and where I've been, and I've got some connections I need to secure. Uh, perhaps I might meet you at the manor in a couple of days. Sure. All right, I'll do. Very well, and. Uh, it was a pleasure fighting alongside you, gents. And ladies. The pleasure yeah. is ours. Pleasure. Wait, we're losing my extra? Just for a day. Don't worry about taking him out. He says, oh, good day and see you soon. And with that, uh, he will... Yep, go on. Theodore? Um, sorry. Um, I'm just gonna say. Uh, Thornham, you have a mansion? I would love it if um, you could show me and Sarah around. It would be great to add it to our sightseeing. Is it all your own? Uh, hard to say. We just got it right a uh, couple of hours yeah. ago.
Yeah, that's kind of our uh, payment for a job. Our oh oh, I get it now. You guys are a throttle. That makes sense. Oh, no. What? what? Are you I not know. sharing this house together? There are bedrooms for all of us, I assume. Yeah, everyone what? leaves their alone time every now and then, but... No, no I, I, we I, want no, the alone no. time always. What? You could do my, a lot worse my, than my, on them. My god, friend, you have a mind on you. I, I, I prefer... He, he does. I prefer, um, women. <laughs> Did you just call me a, a man? <laughs> well, I, I, no, no, no. I just I prefer uh, women that Bananor, I don't work with. Bananor, I recommend you stop now before you stick your foot in a stinker uh, again. Women that I don't work with. <laughs> uh, I see. Unless you're interested, but I think our age gap might be a little too large. I think our age gap is the least of our worries. Have you seen the height of me? You know I'm what? As tall that's as your... I don't even make it to your your knee, sir. One could say that could cause interest, but I think that we should not go down that path. <laughs> no, oh no, we shouldn't. God. I'm like your mother. What the fuck? <laughs> Hence why I'm, I'm more than old enough to be your mother. I've declined since the beginning. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. This. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to cause such awkwardness. You've caused plenty. You Don't did. worry about it. <laughs> but it's still, could, is... could, could I add the mansion to our uh, sightseeing? Would that be okay? I mean, I... at the very, I mean, if, if you feel ever so inclined, I, I guess you can come with us as a friend of Thornham. Yeah, you and your lovely bride. Lovely. She's not a bride anymore. The wedding was yesterday. She's a wife now. Whatever. <sighs> Remember, he said he deflowered her. It. Yeah, Aww. where was the flower again? Could you point to me where the flower is on the teddy bear? <laughs> yeah, you know, I know you're upset because... Uh, <gasps> Mr. Williams over here just uh, insulted you, so I'm not going to take it personally. I know you're just lashing out. Uh, uh, yeah, you, yeah. Guys, you, you guys are kidding me here. I'm I, pain. Is, I can't, I have, I I don't can't know laugh what's going on. Pain. I don't I'm know going what's to going on, bed. friend. Yes, please, please, t take, a, take a night. <laughs> I'll just I immediately just... depart to bed and nonchalant wave as I just walk away. Or should I say please. limp away? Anything to stop this from continuing, please go. And I'll uh, look at the rest of the party, and I'll just be like, "I I should leave as well." Uh, yeah, bye. <laughs> I'm gonna need a lot more alcohol. I feel that. I'll I think uh, that's our long rest right there. I'll turn to Sarah, but they scare easy, but. We are in a new place, Sarah. Who knows what other folks will run into. Oh, Sarah, you silly. Stop. 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 He's fucking talking. We, then, we left. We left. We left. And then... Uh, I know, Theodore, I'm just saying it out loud. And then Theodore will uh, get up from his uh, seat and walk with uh, uh, Sarah back to their room. I hope your rooms aren't next door. Um... I hope not. <laughs> I think they're far enough apart. Thank um, God. When you, uh, you may all take a long rest in the following morning. Um, when you come down for breakfast, um, you will find breakfast laid out for everybody. And um, the barkeep's maid assistant um, has laid out a plate for uh, Sarah as well. Um, just out of sort of kindness. Noticing your interesting interactions with her the previous night. Um, but sitting at a table, a couple over, is Volo. And he looks at you and, ah, oh, good morning, good morning. Um, morning. Well, I suppose uh, the tour is in order, right? Uh, enjoy breakfast and uh, then I'll take you. If that works. Yeah? 
Please, please. I'll try. And as you eat breakfast, we're actually going to take our short break there.
Hello! Welcome back to the second half of uh, the Forgotten Realms Maxi Campaign. Um, Volo, just as you want. Well, good morning! Uh, if you're quite breakfasted enough, perhaps I might, uh, I might take you all to see the mansion. Um, it is a mansion. I would like to, at least during breakfast, have done ten minutes of inspirational speeching to my, my, my group, of course. You're giving down the pep talk, yeah? Um, giving them the pep talk, okay. as all of them gain eight temporary HP. Cool. Um, yeah, as a sort of, I would imagine, uh, Corbin, no, change your name in your brackets, please. Um, as, uh, Belenor will sort of have a chat with you and uh, remind you guys of how well you did in the previous dungeon. And perhaps recount some of the more epic moments of the group to Theodore, who of course hasn't met you all. Uh, you'll all feel inspired and yeah, like Ready me getting knocked the fuck out in one single swing from a gigantic... Aye, you yeah. might have gotten knocked out in one shot, but you got back up and you swung that blade like no other, taking him <laughs> down in two blows. My friends, yeah, we did sure excellent. Two people down. Right after and you got knocked down, my friend. Where our friend sure. is no longer with us, as inspiring as he was in the back lines, taking out the boss in two shots. An excellent, an excellent blow. Ah, ah, a good fighter, but a bit of a dick. <laughs> and our, our excellent friend Kai picking up Thornum to enable him to swing that blade. Excellent job, all of you. We, what excellent fighting! I might not have been able to make oh. that boss laugh, but you all did excellent. Um, it's okay. You can rely on some of us to do the big work. As you say this, as you uh, um, as you finish that speech, uh, Theodore claps and uh, Sarah claps her tentacles <laughs> uh, as you say that uh, a sort of uh, armored woman comes over with a shield slung over her back and a mace at her side uh, ec excuse me I hope I'm not interrupting your breakfast um, no ma'am never uh, which one of you is Kai Morngrove oh the well point to the little one <laughs> Interesting. I'm trying to, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. You completely ignore me, Kai. Uh, which one of you is Thornum Deepstone? Uh, I've got I the wrong person. The other short one, then. The other short, <laughs> the other one. short one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, she looks to you and, ah, I'm Savra. Bloody Jesus. Really? Is that her name? Savra Bella Branta. Um, that's a name, and it can't, I think we'll just call her Savra for the rest of this uh, episode. Um, I'm Savra. I. I wondered if. I understand you might be a little busy, but I wondered if tomorrow you might come and visit us at the Halls of Justice. I'm a representative for the Order of the Gauntlet. The Order of the Gauntlet, huh? Indeed, we swear to fight evil in all its forms. And in the Hall of Justice, the, uh, near the Temple of Tyr, we, uh, we swear to take down evil. It's just, um, I understand that you took down a small Zentarum hideout um, before uh, also breaking through the Xanathar Guild. Well... We're attempting to stop a few of those fights before they happen and send a message to these thugs that further altercations will not be tolerated. And having seen how well you operated recently and heard the rumours of your fine deeds, I wondered perhaps if you might represent us in this act. Aye, that sounds good. That sounds good. Oh. I did get my ass kicked down there, though. I will admit that much. Getting one's ass kicked is valiant if it is in the name of justice. As long as we survive and come out the other end, are still intact. Exactly. Uh, okay, well, you've sold me on it already. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll come to your meeting. And uh, she drops a piece of parchment on the table in front of you. Um, and you will see that it is written in both common and dwarvish. Um, giving you directions to the Order of the Gauntlet. And telling you that uh, swearing in is available between 9 and 5. And there is a short sentence, um, which is the oath. Um... The oath is pretty simple. It's, uh, you know, I do solemnly swear to where possible and where it does not endanger my own life. Uh, no, it doesn't say that. Sorry, wrong one. Um, I do solemnly swear. I, I'm sorry, I've got two of them up on the same I'm screen. I'm up to no good. Um, yeah, that I'm up to no good, yeah. Um, to just chuck it my way, yeah. <laughs> um, to defend the those who cannot protect themselves and to attempt to undo the workings of evil at all possible moments. Um, and it's written in Dwarvish for you to memorise. And she looks at you and, well, and then she sort of taps her gauntlet to her chest and I guess we'll see you tomorrow at the Halls of Justice, and, uh... I definitely shall. Farewell. Um, and with that, uh, Volo looks over to you and... Friend in high places, eh? Savra's a good warrior. And a good friend. Oh, and Taylor's like uh, around. 
Seems like she's pretty well equipped. Mm. Yes. Got her head I'm on straight. Sure. Um, well, so you thought we... you you know of the um, gauntlet then? Ah, the order of the gauntlet are well known. Um, they're a bit crazy, if I might say so myself. Um, reckless with their own lives. Yeah, but, <laughs> Aren't but we all full of valor and honor and the will to do the right thing? Well, they suddenly seem like they're the sort to get into more interesting things than the axe. Mm. I personally uh, don't like how little they pay their employees. It's all about doing things in the name of valor. But <laughs> sometimes riches are needed. Anyway, speaking of riches, shall we go and see yours? Ah, uh, yes, yes. You said it was an actual mansion? Indeed. Um, Trollskull uh, Manor is uh, what is known as, but it is a mansion. Um, here, I have Only a copy of the floor plan. Oh, video. damn. Um, and with that, he will hand you a copy of the floor plan, which you all have in your documents. Um, oh, yes. Uh, only slightly haunted, you said, correct? Well, there's rumours that there was once a poltergeist that helped in the pouring of ale in the tavern taproom downstairs. But uh, now he causes a little bit of trouble. I'm sure it won't be a big deal. Uh, welcome. What's life without a bit of adventure? Um, <sighs> By my beard, this place is huge. Uh, is it? We haven't even left the building yet. Oh, you're looking at the floor plan, of course. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> perhaps I might take you over to the... Uh, to the. Where is this place? Do I have to go back to the previous chapter? Are you fucking with me? I'm trying to say where we're going to go. And I was like, I don't know. We've been doing a lot of it. No, I don't know where we have to go through. Ch North Ward. We're going to the North Ward. Um, and with that, he shall lead you across the town to the strange Halloween music, so I think you're all walking like this, you know, in sneak mode, um, until I find some different music to put on. Um, <laughs> but nevertheless, um, you are able to head over to the... Actually, Sarah I, sneaking. Um, <laughs> and Sarah no, sneaking. she's just sort of bobbing up and down in a very sort of unusual <laughs> manner behind... <laughs> as you all sort of bob through the town. Uh, but the music is relevant to when you arrive. Um, standing before you is a vast building. Um, four stories tall with a tower parapet coming out the right-hand side. Um, excuse me. Um, this is by far the most, uh, most elaborate and grand building in Trollskull Alley. You would have passed a few other buildings on the way. Um, a shop with a sort of, uh, sign hanging ever so slightly, uh, to the side. It is, there is no writing on the sign. There is a large bent nail sticking out of it. Uh, but as you look in the front window, you see displays of ornate wooden furniture. Sort of selection of bows and crossbows. Next door, you see a shop where um, steam and smoke are billowing from the tops of the many windows around what appears to be an indoor forge. Nailed onto the front is a sign saying steam and steel, written in nails. Um, I like the look of this place yeah, already. And yeah, you notice there's an apothecary a little down the road. Whilst these buildings are not too well to do, um, the people within them are clearly good workers and interesting people. But you approach this beautiful manor. Um, it well, stands... I'll be damned, Volo. Yeah. You really weren't kidding. This hmm. place is huge. Mansion indeed. Four stories tall. It has six balconies, two turrets, five chimneys. And indeed, it was once one of the finest taverns around. I don't know too much about the history of it, although I am assured that the Spirit on Tap used to be uh, a very interesting bar, known for the poltergeist that poured the beer. Uh, a half-elf named Liff used to be the barkeeper. I don't know what happened to him, but I can assure you he didn't die on the premises. Um, yeah, perhaps uh, we'll start with the tap room. Hi, let's do it. Okay. As you enter in, the tavern's taproom is filled with broken furniture, tarnished silverware, casks of wine that have turned to vinegar, and worthless detritus. The other empty, the other rooms are all empty except for cobwebs, dust, and a few harmless rats. At the side of this of this home, I'm going to reach into my bag, and I'm going to pull out a very small cube. I'm going to place it on the ground. And I'm going to enlarge it as you see a gelatinous cube start moving around, almost enthralled with the thought of cleaning up this home <laughs> as it scoots around. And as you look behind it, it leaves a path of cleanliness. I completely forgot I gave you that. That is fucking brilliant. That um, is great. Yes, the cleaning cube. Uh, yes. 
Uh, yeah, and it will just keep going, right? Or does it need refilling with water at some point? It just keeps going. Fantastic. It's 24 hours, and then you, I have you to... You see it sort of... It. As it pulls itself across the ground, um, sort of stretching out and then pulling itself behind, Volo looks at you and... What an excellent device. At this point, you hear two plates smash against the wall over the bar. Intruders! 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 Uh, a ghost nice. sort of flies past. He's got a sort of mischievous grin painted upon his face and bright googly eyes. Um, and he looks over at you and... Um, I had no idea he was invisible. Um, yeah, well, he's temporarily Oops. visible, whatever. Um, and he sort of um, begins throwing a plate here and there and he stops in front of you and... Out! Out! And then flies across the Oh, my dear sir. Bed. Whoa. Strange. We're the so, new owners of this home. Owners? So, so, Volo, I assume this is the uh, poltergeist you were talking about. Yes, I, I think that perhaps if you were to well, make some improvements and renovations on the tap room, perhaps he might return to what he used to do, which was help the guests. Well, my dear sir, we've already begun. Look at that cube. So cleanly. Um, he starts, uh, the, the poltergeist starts, uh, he's become invisible, but he starts to write closing time all across the wall. Um, I do love that song. And on Ghost. the dusty floors and on the grimy windows, you know, last call, time to leave. Closing time. <laughs> uh. Follow looks to you and, but, well... Valiant adventurers, I'm sure, if the poltergeist causes too much trouble, it could be removed. Well, I, I would say that we try the first uh, first. I, maybe we repair this home and see if that fixes it, and if we continue to have issues, then... Indeed. Um, and it may well be quite helpful. Anyway, shall we proceed onwards? There's a fabulous kitchen out the back, I'm told. No. Yeah. And he leads you out to the back where you see what was once clearly a kitchen, but is now... you. There's a long piece of iron across the back of the room that is hanging down at one side that clearly contains hooks for pans, pots, and dishes. Um, though right now, no pans, pots, or dishes lie in place. Um, to the back of this kitchen is a pantry, um, which appears to be um, in complete disarray. A few... Uh, large casks cut and, uh, broken and smashed in the corners. Um, Theodore, can I have a perception check, please? That's a 16. Yeah, as you look around the, in this pantry, you do see that some of these pieces don't belong to dishes or pots or pans. Perhaps that they were once used for something else. In fact, as you look at these parts, you realise that maybe they belonged to some sort of android or robot or metal construction. Um. As I um, walk over to look at it, um, Sarah starts, like, um, uh, like crashing. Like, are pans and stuff, like, hung up? Mm -hmm. uh, no, they weren't. The, the, ra the, the rack was empty. The pots and pans have instead been thrown around the room, but they're all screwed all over the floor. Okay. Um, yeah, Sarah is going to, like, bump into walls and, like, knock things over. The other going to, like, rush over to her. Um, and just, like, be, like, checking her to, like, see what's happened. And, like, he'll quickly, like, turn around to the group. And, like, <laughs> nothing to worry about. She's, uh, she's not really a morning person. She's fine. <laughs> And, like, he'll quickly, like, take out, like, a little screwdriver and, like, quickly, like, tie him some balls and, like, put it back in and turn around and act like nothing's wrong. Um, oh, I, so I, screwdrivers, you seem like you could be of some use in the home. Is there a possibility you could maybe help us repair this home a bit? Hmm. I've never been a handyman before. What's well, the thing? Well, I mean, I'm sure if... All goes well. Um, you can join us in other things and get paid for that as well. 
I, uh, I know you said you're a flirty type. I'm not a gigolo, so... I don't... I, uh, <laughs> that's not what I was for... I've already told you I'm more interested in women that are yes, not Yes, and Sarah isn't up for grabs either. I'm really sorry. I can't access Theodore's character sheet. Um, do you have mending? Oh, yeah, you can't, act for, no. you can't access any I can't artificer look, sheets, I can't can look at an artificer you? character sheet. Uh, no, I don't have mending. You don't have and mending? I, I will don't even... Wow. Uh, and I'll, I'll even tell you this, uh, my dear friend. I'm not interested in mechanics, so that... You, no need to stress on that. Okay, so... Being a repairman, how much does it pay? Uh, maybe we should discuss that with your friend Thornum. Uh. Um, as you look to the ground, uh, Theodore, and see these parts that used to perhaps belong to a robot, um, Volo will sort of gesture to you and pay. Surely part of the interest is in the play, no? Um, and he begins to sort of pick up two pieces that look like they might once have been legs and stand them up on the ground. And Surely that would be interesting to you, wouldn't it, Theodore? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> He's suggesting that perhaps rebuilding the robot that once... Did you miss this bit? I, uh... No. Sarah is quite perfect the way she is. He's not talking about Sarah. It's oh, there's robot. pieces of a robot on the floor that used to once work here. He's... Oh, he said to build that? He was suggesting that perhaps yeah. rebuilding that might be reward in and in of itself. Oh. I could, I mean... I don't really have the time. Like I said, I am on my honeymoon. I don't think the old ball and chain will uh will want me working so much whilst uh, on holiday. Wow. You wow. can think of it as working towards a present. Yeah, I mean, you can live here with us after it's done being repaired or even while it's being repaired. Oh my goodness. A repairman job our... and a free place to stay? Yeah, it could be your our uh, honeymoon gift for you. Your newlywed gift. Not home. Well, don't, I... don't get too far ahead of yourself. He's just going <laughs> to no, 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 no. Reel it back in. Reel it back. Hi, thank you really, so much. giving him a room to live with us is reel it back in. No. no it sounded no, like no, you were no, trying no, no. to give him the home. Yeah, I, I thought the same as well. <laughs> the whole thing? Think... No, no, come on, come on. You no, guys are having a different conversation from us. <laughs> I started uh, the conversation. You said a place to live. I'm offering him that as a gift. Yes, he can have a, a room. Place to live. Ah. Yes, yeah, he uh, can yeah. have a room. That's guys. Fine. Bear yeah. in mind that he's still there. Like, this is a very weird way yes, to have I, a discussion. Yes, I, I, Carry on, Theo. I'm, I'm, um, thank you, Kai. Uh, that is so um generous. And he'll like turn, like he'll move, like he'll put his arm around Sarah and like turn like she'll turn as if they're having like a, their own huddle um and like he'll probably like he'll whisper but you guys can probably hear what he's saying he's not very soul um and he'll just be like oh, what do you think i mean living with strangers i mean i know we know thornum but still we haven't seen him in a long time and then there'll be like a, a pause and i'll be like i think you're right sarah i think this could be a good place and then they'll both turn around, but like, instead of turning like this, they'll turn like that to face everyone. Like, they'll turn in the other direction. And do like a full 270, yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll take it. Um, as you say that, can I have a deck save, please? Oh, no. 13. Okay, so you do a full circle, and as you turn around and you go, we'll take it, you step on what appears to be a broken barrel. Unfortunately, it's uh, not just a broken barrel, and you immediately drop out of sight. Um, you won't take any damage, but you will fall down into what appears to be a cellar. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Thank God he didn't step on my cube. <laughs> Theo, you're right. You've only dropped six foot. You'll be absolutely fine. Hello, hello, hello. My dear friend, I'll point at Kai. Can you at least supply some light down there for him? Um... Oh, there's there's no need. Um, and he'll take um something out of his pocket, 
and it looks like a little um, mechanical wizard with a little staff and he'll like flick the staff a couple of times and the crystal in it will like flicker and then I will uh, you that's my magical tinkering uh, to have a light well, five foot around mm -hmm. and as it looks around you see that this looks like a cross of two things um, there is certainly a wine cellar and an ale cellar down here um, but in the back of the ale cellar appears to be some more of the parts of that robot that you saw upstairs. Um, perhaps this is, uh, where bits of it have been left to, um, to rot. As you inspect a couple of these, um, Sarah sort of turns her back on the door, uh, on the trap door, um, and thought him, you can swear she let a little, <sighs> um, as she appears to be doing the jealous look back turned, um, from <laughs> Theodore. <laughs> um, but, you know that Sarah doesn't make sounds. Uh, I'm just sure you heard that. And as I uh, see the one and everything, I'll shout up. Don't let Sarah down here. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. Very angry drunk. Um, <laughs> and then I'll uh, I'll look around for some uh, stairs. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a ladder back up. And oh, Volo, okay. Volo leans over to Thornum and... Who's oh, Sarah? That's, uh, that thing. And I'll, uh, point to the, um, or talk to the steel defender. Oh, he looks at it and he goes, Oh, magnificent! Wonderful! Such incredible workmanship. This is Sarah. Fantastic, yeah, right? Her yeah, personality yeah, clearly great. matches her exquisite craftsmanship. And then yeah, he will sort of give her a... Talented. He will give her a complete bow. and A pleasure to meet you, darling. Um, and she just turns her back on him again. <laughs> um, and uh, you're able to climb back out, uh, Theodore. Um, and uh, Vola looks at you and, well, there's some stairs over there leading upstairs. Shall we have a little look? Sure. I'm going to firstly look around uh, the floor that we're on right now and attempt to find a open wall that looks like a good place to hang a painting. Oh, the whole place is open wall, basically. Um, perhaps yeah, behind the, to... perhaps uh, in the tap room somewhere. Yeah, uh, I, I'll uh, go to the tap room and I'll look towards our friend uh, and I'll ask him if there's a possibility he has a hammer and a nail. That'll be you, Theodore. He's asking you for a hammer and a nail. If you have a tinker's tools, you have a hammer and a nail. Uh, then I will take out a hammer and a nail. Um, um, I, I, I know that you're not quite tall. Um, is there a possibility that you can get up to a higher height? I can hold you if need be to be able to hide, hang it a little bit higher on the wall for me. Theodore's a gnome. He's really short. That's why I said he's short, so if I could hold him or have Oh, him... you'll hold him, sorry. I thought you asked him yeah. to put it um, up for you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to look at you, and then down at the hammer and nail, and then back up at you, and think, and say, um... I'm not quite you, proficient. Do you not know how to use a hammer and nail? If, you, if you're willing to part with it for a moment, then I guess I can attempt. Uh, Josh, I have actually given you the mending cantrip as well, just to on a side note. So if you want to refresh, I've added that as an extra. Um, I sort of relied, I but I've relied super heavily on the idea that Theodore has mending, as he's an artificer who makes things. Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, carry on. As you, very least, uh, you can. Take I, I'm pretty it. sure Bellinor will know how to hammer a nail into a wall. Yeah. And as and you hang so this I'll, picture, I'm pretty sure you can't mess that up. <laughs> as you hang this picture, you feel a swish of wind behind you. Eleanor, as the poltergeist sort of looks over and... Oh, well, that's quite nice, isn't it? Quite. It's a start! And then he throws a plate at the wall. Um, not where your picture is, just at a different wall. Um, and then zooms off across the room. Yes. I'm hoping we, they'll uh... bring a sense of home, a sense of beauty to this place. <laughs> Sir. I we uh, might have to... Um calm that uh, gentleman somehow. well from what I can see he seems to be as intrigued as I am with beauty 
Maybe we freshen the place up and bring it life. It's going to be hard to keep it fresh if he's, if he's going to keep throwing plates everywhere, but... <laughs> well, no better way to, to attempt to figure try. it out than figuring it out, my friend. Look at my cube. Uh, Look at how gloriously it's closing the end, uh, cleaning the entry away at this point. Eventually. Eventually. Volo gestures to the stairs. Shall we? Yes, of course. He won't lead the way, though. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, I will, will then. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, as he follows Thorn upstairs, you come up the staircase and you're led into what looks to be a sort of open dining seating area. Um, there's two long tables across the room um, and some dining chairs. And around the edge are some sofas and a chaise long. Um, there are doors to the south and north. As you look to the north and you open the door, you see uh, what appears to be some kind of workshop. Um, there are three or four different counters in here, some rusty tools, chisels, um, what appears to be an oversized spork, whatever that's used for, um, a few, uh, strange looking, uh, alchemical devices that Kai, you may have seen the like of, but these are old and very out of date and not very useful. Um, there's uh, a large glass side to this den. Um, where if you head out, um, it's a glass-covered balcony. And it looks like there was once plant pots here. The balcony actually extends all the way along the north wall and all the way along the west wall, if you exit from the other one area. And at the corner of the den is a parapet leading up, which you know to be the turret. Um, oh, my dear friends, it seems that we found a workshop for our new friend here. Theo, the if I may call you that, or would you refer to be called Theodore? Uh, for you, Theodore. Oh, well, fair <laughs> enough. Well, Theodore, uh, it seems we found a workshop for you to work in, as well as anybody else who'd be interested. I think I find myself mostly in this area with the glass. Uh, it, it seems to have a potential for beauty, and I'd like to put myself there. Well, Volo calls out to you, and weren't you a painter? Come no, and see yes, this. I am. Come and see this. And he leads I'll you follow. into the long, narrow corridor. Um, in the corridor are. Uh, large uh, frames, painting picture frames um, in gold and silver and bronze and mahogany but none of them contain any artwork well well don't stew on. Well, maybe filling these should be your, primor your priority well, it seems as though I've been I see a task ahead of myself interesting unfilled frames but beautiful frames at that Masterpieces or wait, eh? Ah. Many a tales can be told in this hallway. Many a tales for every single one of these frames. I hope to one day fill them to tell our story. Mm -hmm. Valiant. And he'll go all the uh, way down the One corridor. of the moments where I wish I had a tankard of ale to drink to that. <laughs> Perhaps you should get that tap from working downstairs. I, I'm not sure I know of anybody who makes a decent ale, but perhaps you oh, could get involved well, with a brewer's guild. We know someone. Oh, oh yeah, funny. we know someone. We do. Do you? What? Yes. Oh! Oh, well, that's interesting. I must be in there for a reason, I guess. Um, Daniel Peabody's, yes. actually, as a matter of fact. Yes, there was an S on that by mistake, by the way. It's just Daniel Peabody. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> um, just the person. But yes, uh, as you step down this long corridor, um, you find yourselves in what looks to be a bedroom of some sort. Um... Quite well appointed, um, but everything's fallen to dust and dis disrepair. Um, Dibs. Very well. Um, as you return back, that's really unhelpful. So, yeah, you have to walk all the way back round, apparently. Uh, <laughs> back into the hallway. Uh, oh, you see wow. a spiral staircase heading upwards and a door to the south leading into a room. It has a nice balcony, but otherwise appears empty. Not sure what it's for. Um, yes, if you, you guys may claim any room that you'd like, but the one that we were just in, it seems to be right by the the hallway of art, and I'd like that one. Well, very well. Um, I don't think anybody is, as yet is claiming any bedrooms. Um, you follow the stairs up to the next level, um, and you find yourself in a central room uh, with many doors extending outwards and another staircase leading up again. Uh, should you take the uh, bottom left or top left entrances 
you'll find yourself in bedrooms. Um, one bedroom seems to lead into a, a private bathroom. Um, I take back my claim. Nice. No, you do not. Um, in this uh, <laughs> private bathroom, uh, Thornham, you see uh, what appears to be a sort of uh, four foot long tub uh, that is very deep. Um, with a strange wheel at the back. You immediately recognize this from your time in dwarf homes um, as a source of warm water. Uh, these wheels are usually enchanted to heat the water as the water flows through, though when you turn it, you hear a creak and a strange sound before a... <coughs> as it sputters out emptiness, dust, spiders and insects. I'm afraid you'll have to get that fixed if you want to use the bath. Uh, I may be able to do a few things for that, but... How is this slowly turning into a mobile game? <laughs> uh, well, it, it's just, it's there to explore, you know, there's lots of things to be done here. Um, one thing you might note, um, Belenor, is that your bedroom did have a spare room next to it that could perhaps be converted to a bathroom later on, should you wish. It was empty at the time, and it had a balcony as well. Um, oh, the, taking the room in the north uh, also has a bedroom. Uh, this bedroom leads again into a private bathroom. Uh, this private bathroom area, though, is slightly different. Kai, this might interest you. Um, the bath area is much smaller. In fact, it's probably only of any use to Kai, although Theodore might be able to fit into it. Um, <laughs> and there is a large floor-to-ceiling window at the edge um, with curtains that can be pulled across it. Um... And on this window are stained glass painting uh, of flowers and a grove. Beautiful. Ooh, for sure, that's mine. That is a very, very beautiful painting. Um, as you return to the main central area, you take the door to the north and find yourself in a tiny little square with a single bucket. And the bucket has runes inscribed all the way around the outside of it. Volo, looking a little confused, sort of pokes it and it smells a bit funny, don't you think? Um, this bucket is a uh, bucket of teleportation. Um, quite simply, if you put something in it, it will vanish into the ether where nobody can find it ever again. It can be used as a privy or a bathroom. It's a toilet. It's a toilet, yeah, pretty much. Um, but we're calling it a bucket of teleportation, okay? Teleport your shit to somewhere else. Um, nevertheless, uh, if you then take the eastern door, uh, you will find a study full of books and bookshelves. Um, all of these books are tattered, torn, ripped, um, and rotted. None of them are any use anymore, but clearly the room was once an excellent library and a study. Um, perhaps it could be restored to uh, its previous excellence again. Um, and the board, door in the bottom right seems to have a matching bucket of teleportation. And no, they don't teleport to each other. You can't just pass shit to the other person's toilet. Sorry to disappoint. my plans. As you uh, are in the top left bedroom, you may exit into the uh, tower. Um, and there is a ladder leaning up to the peak of the turret. As you enter into the very peak of the turret, it has a glass dome over the top. Um, this is called a solarium. Uh, it can be used for growing exotic plants. And it seems to be attached to your bedroom, Kai, so quite useful. Yes. If, however, you went up the main staircase, you will find yourself with um, a bedroom, uh, well appointed with a beautiful view out over the city. Um, and opposite that bedroom is what appears to be a storage room. But in this storage room are crates upon crates of nails and screws and clanky objects and strange pieces of metal and unusual joint devices and gears and levers and strange tools that none of you will recognize except for Theodore. This looks like heaven. Um, it's a playroom, basically. Um, so you will find a bedroom and opposite a storage room um, full of robot-y stuff. Uh, for reference, the workshop on the second floor was much more like blacksmiths and alchemists and um, wood carvers and carpenters and other such places. You could all share that. This uh, area up the top with the storage room has a workbench in the back corner that's much more sort of artificery. 
Um, so the room should be fairly obvious to you all. And at this point, I will upload you the labelled document. And we may all see it on the screen as well, if I can get this. Uh, that's the outside of the manor, by the way. I'm sorry I didn't uh, uh, share that earlier, but that's the outside of the manor. It looks quite nice, no? Oh, bugger. Misclicked. Oh, okay, so mine's the attic bedroom with the attic, attic storage. storage, yep. Um, okay. And that's got a workshop inside of it. Um, at the north uh, of the third floor is the area with the solarium. Um, and that would be, I assume, for Kai uh, Morngrove. Um, at the uh, south end of that room is the area with the old dwarven bath. Um mm -hmm. And uh, that, of course, would work nicely for Thornham. Um, and then you have the beautiful bedroom on the second floor for yourself, um, Bellinor. I don't have to share a floor with anybody. Fantastic. No, indeed. Um, at the north was that sort of strange den-like area that is labeled den. Um, as you go through this room labeled den, um, Volo turns to you and... I understand that that room might have its uses, but perhaps... Well, when Rene returns, perhaps you might uh, have him outfit that for himself, uh, if he's going to be part of your group. That's fair. You could always stay in the spare room next to mine if I decide not to. Bathroom, it's yes. it. Um, what indeed. Indeed. Um, which reminds me, uh, speaking of uh, Rene, um, he is a man of many, many, uh, many, many connections. However, I have a connection that perhaps might help you. Um, oh, come on. What have I done? I need to go back to the base book. Bugger. Um, is there not a... I want to... Oh, that's how I do it. Sorry. This could be a real nightmare to work my way around. Perfections. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. No, no, no. There we go. Um... Yes, I have a couple of friends that I might introduce you to. Um, but one that I think perhaps you should get speaking to immediately um, is uh, Master Wainwright. Uh, Master Wainwright is a mason by trade, although his wife is an excellent carpenter. Um, is uh, Brian Wainwright. Um, he works for the Guild of Stonecutters, Masons, Potters and Tile Makers. Um, but he's known for sort of house repairs and the such. Should you wish to start rebuilding and building up, um, perhaps he'd be a good person to speak to. Spend some of your hard-earned gold. I suggest you make friends with the local business people. Um, and go out and introduce yourselves if you're going to be moving in. Um, certainly that would be a step for me, but... Well, perhaps, uh, perhaps you're in need of finding some funds in the meantime. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I'm afraid that I may have outstayed my welcome at your home. As I said, um, uh, perhaps tomorrow morning we might transfer the ownership? Um, I'll arrange a meeting. A Provided, of course, idea, you sir. are happy with the mansion. Yeah, oh, I, I see no, I have no qualms with your, with your query. It's going to take a little bit of work, but I think with that work, it's going to be, it's going to be a bang up place. I'm going to look at the group. And I'm going to say, well, as long as nobody has any issues, why don't we go about cleaning up as much as we can? Maybe just your living areas for now so you don't have to sleep in filth. That would be a good start. And with that, I will pull out a long scroll. And I'll paint onto that scroll buckets and mops for every single person. And for the first time with my character, I will thrust the scroll up into the air and down drops all of the buckets and mops. <laughs> Excellent. As you all take a bucket and mop and lead yourself into different areas, Kai, a cat appears in thin air in front of you and then drops to the ground nimbly. It looks up at you, a white cat, and says, Interested in joining the Emerald Enclave? Come and meet us at Falconmare in the Southern Ward. We seek to preserve the balance within Waterdeep and maintain the focus of nature. 
And as soon as it's finished its sentence, it sort of coughs <coughs> and spits up a furball and then meows gently at you for dashing away. Uh, Kai, you may give me an arcana check. Oh, I've been drinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, this would make more sense to Kai than perhaps I have made it make sense. A six. A six. I think I'm the only person that would understand what just happened in our party. Uh, no, no, I think, Kai, you understand that this cat was temporarily enchanted, though how, you're not sure. Um, it is most definitely turned back into a general house cat now. Um, but the message for rep repetition. Interested in joining the Emerald Enclave? Come meet us at Falconmare in the Southern Ward. Uh, we seek to preserve the balance within Waterdeep and nature, uh, and preserve nature within the city gates. That's a hell of a lot of words. Okay. I'll send it in, a, in chat as well. Um, but yeah, um, that's a little something for you. And uh, with that, uh, I shall, I think, leave the party cleaning. And I, um, as I... Yeah. Go ahead. Go on, Theo. Um, Theo wouldn't have started cleaning. Um, he would have uh, gone to the um, inn that he was staying at uh, with Sarah um, and got all of his belongings and stuff. And We would all have to do that from the place, but yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that makes sense. You'd all go and get your belongings, but I think Theodore will probably go separately, maybe. Um, you know, it's a big decision for him to just join the group like this. Um, yeah. And Theodore, as you arrive... Um, at the tavern first, you see. Oh god, this is going to be a mission. Ah no, I closed it. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. Um, as you arrive at the inn, uh, you see a woman handing out um, flyers, leaflets, newspapers. You're not sure. And uh, she turns to you and, have you heard the news? No. No what news? Uh, this is just Theodore. Sorry. Oh, just um, yeah. Sorry. And, uh, well, this tells you better than I can, but a city disappeared last night. Um, <laughs> disappeared? What do you mean? <laughs> Rumors say that it was dragged into the Nine Hells. Here. And she hands you a, a newspaper that seems to have been enchanted um, so that the front page is moving. Um, think Daily Prophet, Harry Potter sort of style. Um, and what you see is um, an image of uh, a dark, fiery hand rise up, grab the whole of Elturel, and just simply drag it through the ground, leaving nothing in its wake. Rumours are flying around the tavern like wildfire, stoking fears that another city could be next. It could be Neverwinter, it could be Waterdeep, but rumours say it might be Baldur's Gate. Who knows? But it can't be a good thing, that's for sure. Um, I don't know how to respond to that. You're not meant to. It's there for you to read and possibly tell your companions about. Don't worry, I understand that you're not going to turn around and be like, Right, let's go! Okay. <laughs> There's no response to be given. She's already left you. Um, she just wanted to make sure you got a copy of the local news, considering what an exciting bit of news it was. As you all gather your belongings, um, Berlinor, you come last into the, um, into the tavern, and... Uh, you are approached, um, by a halfling, um, who just sort of walks past you, um, and then sort of opens his hand as he walks past. A small paper bird, like a crane, flaps three times before landing on your shoulder. It's not gonna speak, it's a paper bird. Yeah, no, I'll grab it <laughs> off of my shoulder and uh, unfurl the beautiful artwork that I have just destroyed. Renair tells us that you're a good bet. Two nights hence, I look forward to seeing you at the opera at the Lightsinger Theatre in the Sea Ward. If you're interested, meet Mert in the intermission. Private box C, formal attire is required from admittance. Your friends may come to the opera, as four tickets are enclosed. However, only you are welcome in the intermission. Renair can guide you. He has his own ticket. Um, 
I will send you a little bit of that in the... Oh, sorry. Moan, that was your message. Um, I forgot to press enter. Um, and uh, that is the one for you. And on that note, as you will collect your belongings, return back to the home. Pick up your buckets and mops if you are so willing. Um, René will arrive at the house a day earlier than he said he would with six men who look broad of shoulder but otherwise um, a little basic um, and each one of them has a tattoo across its face he looks to you Bellinor well good day I see you're getting yourselves acquainted and rested I've brought some friends to help fantastic we were actually in need of worksmen to help us repair this home however so thinking you are worksmen is not what I've brought though held oh. by they are um, these men are freed slaves from Neverwinter uh, they've been working for me on the quiet for a while uh, hearing rumours and news but they're in need of some cash and I thought that oh. perhaps uh, they might help you out um, this here is Carl um, Carl is, uh, quite good with basic magics, um, and he may be able to assist you in cleaning. Fantastic. Uh, um, shake his hand. This here is Shag. Uh, Shag is, uh, was once one of the foremost woodcarvers in town. Fortunately, he's a little down in his luck and severely in debt, but he's still good with a hammer and nails and a chisel. Perhaps he might at least get your beds in order. Oh, fantastic as well. Thank you. I'll shake his hand and introduce myself. Uh, this is San and Yever. Uh, San and Yever are tailors. Um, they might at least uh, get you started with some bedding and some blankets and such and some curtains and other tapestries. But most interesting are these last two. These are Jace and Veg. Jace and Veg are... Well, let's just say if they don't know someone, they're not worth knowing. Um, so... Uh, perhaps they can get you acquainted with the local populace. And... Uh, it seems you've introduced us to some very helpful individuals. And for the people that I haven't greeted already, I'll greet them and introduce myself. And um, I don't know if I'm the only one around, but uh, no. if if so, oh, then yeah, I'll uh, point to the rest of my party and uh, I'll introduce the the six people to them as well and tell them what they're going to be helping us with. And um, I'll ask them all. Uh, what type of salary, what type of wages they're looking for. Uh, Renez already paid us. Um, oh, uh, very very well, and but, it's uh, fantastic. If you don't mind, we might need to be to make a room of your uh, tap room downstairs for a while. Um, a couple of days. No, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Uh, please make yourself at home. Do what you need. Renez uh, turns turn to you, Bellinor, and Perhaps we might have a word upstairs. I'd like to see these uh, painting room corridors yes, that absolutely. I was told about. And he will gesture to all of you, and he's including you in this. Perhaps he might have a word with all of you upstairs. Yeah, and uh, as we make our way upstairs, I'll point to, uh, once we get to the hall, I'll point to the room uh, next to mine, and I'll say, uh, for now you can stay here until we change it uh, into a bathroom. I know it seems... Or the crude, but um, in, then there's a room across the hall that you can move into afterwards if you would like to stay with us. Oh, thank you. I do have my own place, though. I try not to use it much. My father has spies upon it. I won't bring those spies to your door, though. I might make a little bit of a place of it occasionally. A friend of mine or two might stop by. But importantly, I must explain. These people downstairs, the slaves, they're wanted by the Zentarum. I don't mean to bring trouble to your door, but I thought this might be a good place for them to lay low for a couple of days before making their escape. As at the moment, the city gates are being watched, and in the meantime, of course, they might help you. They are not requesting gold, but this is their payment. It's somewhere to lay low a couple of days. Uh, very, 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 very fair. Yeah, if they, they can stay here, I see no issue with keeping them here. It seems we've made enemies of that guild anyway, so why not? Why well, indeed? More disservice to them. Uh, but speaking of enemies, um, I must remind you, I don't know how accustomed you are to the rules of the city. You can make changes and adjustments within your home on other floors, but if you wish to make adjustments to the taproom, 
You will require the approval and oversight uh, of the Carpenters, Roofers and Plasterers Guild for repairs to the walls and roof. The Cellarers and Plumbers Guild is best equipped to handle the refurbishing of the basement and the plumbing. And the Laundress Guild will be required if you wish to have bed sheets for guests. The streets around the establishment are kept up by the Dung Sweepers Guild and the Loyal Order of Street Labourers, but you've got to contact them if you want to get back on the map. Uh, if you're going to have any meat or meat meat sold by the group, you'll need to contact the Guild of Butchers and Ale and Wine. You'll need to speak to the Vinters and the Distillers and the Brewers Guild, of course, and get permission and bread and pastries and the bakers. And there's there are many people that you will need to communicate with in your restoring of a tavern. Um, that was a lot, my friend, a lot. Well, indeed, I'll take I'll write down a list for you. I know that obviously you haven't operated for long in the city, but. Well, it just so happens Floon himself is a businessman in the city, and he'll be more than happy to introduce you to all of the people you might need to speak to, but let me remind you that it's no small step, becoming a business owner. I would suggest you make the uh, adjustments to your home first, and then set about looking after the taproom. Very well. Um, I'm going to uh, whisper to him that I do need to speak to him about something, but uh, other than that, all. Well, indeed, and I you, but... <sighs> Perhaps, uh, let me attend to a few things first, and I'll speak to them. And in fact, he will make you wait till next session, as I'm afraid that is where we are going to end. Uh, we're yeah. all fixing up the house. I know it's a little bit of a shorter episode, but I think, uh, given how much there is to do, and how much downtime there's going to be, I think this is a good place to stop. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, what, downtime is cleaning, so... <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know what your microphone just did, but if you want to make it make words instead, it would be great. I just said, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I just said, <laughs> I was like, oh, wicked. <laughs> Good chat. Um, yeah, and we come to uh, MVPs. Um, I will start off with the obvious. Um, Theodore introducing his wife and Battlesmith uh, Steel Defender. I don't think that's going to be forgotten anytime soon. Um, no, and then turn I... to him himself. Josh, your MVP. Um, I think my MVP... Um, MVP is gonna be um, when the inevitable happens and Sarah gets drunk. <laughs> I'm very excited for that moment. Um, I, mean, I guess that's not an MVP because it hasn't happened yet. So no, was there anything from the session that stood out? Uh, I like that all of our rooms were uh, like different and a bit catered to us. Yeah, um, that was um, a nice touch. I was really, really disappointed that you never got to see Blake's room. But, uh, never mind, eh? Um, I'm oh, sorry, we're on the wrong screen. Let's uh, get back over here. Um, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed you didn't see Blake's room, but I think that what you got in the attic was quite cool anyway. Uh, Oscar? Uh, um, I, I'd have to go, um, with our very, very valiant man getting absolutely shit on in one hit, then being <laughs> recovered and turning and shitting upon the man who shit on him. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was quite a light for a boss fight, wasn't it? But my god, yeah. that crit made a difference. Um, oh, yeah. Speaking of he who was laid low, uh, Master Thornham, Jamal, uh, your MVP. That was literally going to be mine, getting clapped out and then clapping two people out straight away back to back. That was uh, that was a good thing. That was uh, something. Did anything else but, stand um, out to you? I... <sighs> the other moment, I've got... I, I, I have to say, you said about the uh, reveal with the Steel Defender... But just everyone's reaction in the party to that was just... Then the entire conversation I had after it, I was just like, Oh my god, what is this table? This table is just wild. Props to recovering it in the second half, though, and allowing it to be an interesting bunch of interactions. So See, thank I told you. I for... <laughs> told you. Fucking told you. <laughs> you guys said some worrying things in the break. Um, nevertheless, uh, Moon, uh, your MVP. Uh, number one is slapping a good berry in Jamal's fucking mouth because he wouldn't stop whining about the yes. nerf. <laughs> and number uh, two is uh, definitely Jamal getting back up and beating the shit out of the people who downed him in one turn. Yeah. And not getting recognition for being the person who let him do that. Yeah, <laughs> ah, well. Um, I did in my, in my tale, thank you very much, that I told of inspiring. True, true. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm really looking forward Both to the... Of the healer. To the Troll Skull Man, uh, Troll Skull Manor, uh, being a long, sort of interesting part of the campaign as we see it like progress with the group. Um, obviously, you've just been given a bunch of quests and missions, so despite the fact there's downtime, you will probably also need to do some of that stuff. Um, 
but yeah, I definitely think it's a really interesting, props to the book, because it's got nothing to do with me, but it's a really interesting addition to a campaign, having something that grows with the group that isn't the group, you know? Um, who knew that Sims during a D&D campaign could actually be quite exciting? Um, mm. But yeah, I think uh, it's going to be really fun, sort of building upon the home base. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, uh, guys, thank you very much for playing. I really appreciate it. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all in two weeks' time. As uh, I'm afraid that next week we will be taking a break, taking a week off as I'm going away for the weekend. Um, but with that, it leaves me to say goodbye. Uh, if you guys would like to say goodbye. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Bye. We shall see you, see you soon.